Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today I am reviewing Our Shall and the Tree of Wishes by Washne Chakshi. This one was being released in the beginning of April and I wasn't initially planning to film a review even though I have reviewed the first and the second book in the series on my channel. I will leave the link down below. But someone asked me if I was going to make a review of book three and know that hasn't happened before so I just decided to do it. I read this now in May for Asian Readathon and also because of course I wanted to continue the Serious. Let's talk about this book. I won't spoil this book and I will try not to spoil f the second and first book But obviously I need to kind of talk about things that has happened a bit So like I will be vague, but if you don't want to know anything about the previous books Then I don't know if you should watch this, but I will try to avoid spoilers in general It's gonna be four books in this series and it's called the Pandava Quartet because the main character are Shah and her other friends or soul siblings are the incarnated Pandava brothers so they have their soul and it's like warriors that will defend and defeat the evil in the world that's going on This one still follows obviously our shah. They are supposed to stop this prophecy to be heard by the lackeys of the sleeper but they failed to do this and now this prophecy is kind of like a coded message thing like you don't know really what it means yet. The characters are much smarter than me though so they figure it out and they go out on this mission thing to find the tree of wishes before the sleeper does and on the way there is different meetings with different Hindu mythology characters but also just like the adventure, the banter, everything that you know from the series before or if you didn't I will get into it very soon. It's a race basically to find this thing before the sleeper does. So as I just said the world is based on Indian mythology. We have all these different characters that are all Indian or biracial. It is magic based on in Hindu mythology. Do I say Hindu or Hindu mythology? What am I even saying? Is it based on mythology from India? I don't know what I just said because my tongue keeps twisting and I'm very very sorry. So yeah the world is based on this and this is Rick Riordan's presence. So it is in resembles of Percy Jackson that is based on the Greek mythology. So if you like Percy Jackson you would definitely like Rick Riordan's presence books. But this one I have read a lot of them now reminds me the most of Percy Jackson in the way the story plot and the way the story and the plot is built up in so like we have this adventure quest thing that goes over a few days they have a deadline it's very much Percy Jackson like just that we have Indian mythology instead it's great the characters are great we have Aru who is so headstrong and cool and is the daughter of Thunder so she's awesome we have Nini who is Indian and Filipino and is the daughter of that and she is literally scared of death all the time. She's the kind of character that goes around, but if we do this, what if we die? If we go this, what if you die? And then all the characters are so used to it that they just finish her sentences and say, oh, and we can die. And it's just the most hilarious thing. We have Bryn, which was introduced in the last book and her and Ari wasn't really friends, but they became friends in the book. And they just have formed the most trusting relationship where they trust each other and follow each other's back. The different Pandavas can talk to each other in their minds and it's the most adorable thing. Just the trust they have for each other and how much Aru and Bryn grew and just became so close and Bryn can shame shift and is the daughter of wind and she is awesome daughter of wind daughter of the wind god oh my god I can't speak then we have Aiden who is the boy and the funny thing is that the five Pandava brothers that was before them they were all married to the same woman and here instead of them being reborn as guys, they were all reborn as girls and their wife was reborn as Aiden, he has the soul of their wife so they call him wifey and it's the most I just can't eat, it's the most adorable thing and he also takes photographs and it's like not a pandava but like a another word for it that now slipped my mind of course and he's just the most adorable little boy and he and Aru blink blink that's all I got to say. We also have Rudy with us in this book who is a serpent prince and he travels with them on this adventure in this one and he is just hilarious, kind of pussy, 
so much fun, adds so much fun to the story. And then we also are introduced to the last two Pandava sisters in this. They're called Nikita and Sheila. Nikita loves clothes and has control over the plants and stuff. And I feel like we didn't get to know her sister Sheila as much as we did with Nikita, but I'm sure we will in the next book. And I forgot to say that Aiden also is like the son of like an Aspera thing. So when he sings, people are basically in trance and that was fun too. Either way, those are the new characters that were introduced in this and together they got a new nickname called the potatoes and I am actually a child so I thought that was hilarious because yes potatoes please because since not all of them are pandavas they couldn't call them, them the pandava so they just decided to be the potatoes and I thought every time watching Chakshi mentioned that they were the potatoes like the potatoes walk down the street or whatever I loved it okay overall in the book I just love the whole theme of friendship of course the mythology and how much we learn and just adventure and I just think about all the kids that can relate to this and it makes me very happy it's generally just a fun time I keep saying it is like Percy Jackson because it is so similar to it and I love that because Percy Jackson is awesome but it's just such a strong story on its own. It's just really a fun thing. The humor is very similar for example like in Percy Jackson and I think like so many more should pick this up if they enjoyed Percy Jackson I'm just saying. But overall it's just a strong story on its own and yeah the sisterhood, the friendship and the good old time. So there's also this other theme ongoing in this book where Aru thinks that she might betray her siblings for the sleeper because they are on the good side, right? They fight with the gods and the sleeper fights for the other creatures in the underworld because the gods in this mythology betrayed them. They took the nectar that made them immortal and then the other creatures were supposed to get this nectar as well but they were like nah we don't want to give it to you so they feel really betrayed by that and in the last book we met this character who had been betrayed by the gods but also by her husband if I remember correctly and Ari even though she had to stop her felt really bad for her. There's this ongoing thing in this where our questions if she's on the good side. What is the good side? Are you on the good side because they say you are on the good side? She doubts that what she fights for is correct and she's really scared to say this out loud because she doesn't want to be on the sleeper side either because she doesn't believe in what he does as well. And I really like like the question that you can't be thoroughly good but you're not thoroughly evil either and that it's just this ongoing thought that our trust has throughout this and I think it's done really well to like question your beliefs and what people tell you to do but also just what is good and evil and I love that distinction always. That is an interesting thing that just Roshna takes up and just that Ari makes her more of a complex character that doesn't just follow blindly everything. And dislikes in this? I have a hard time to find dislikes in these, they're just so much fun. But there is this thing holding me back that doesn't give them five stars. It's not that there's anything I specifically dislikes. It just isn't a five star book for me. But I feel like there is this, I was gonna say meme, where people agree that four star books, etc., can be as strong and as powerful and as good as a five star book. I just feel like there's this point where I can't give it five stars. And uh, I'm trying to talk about this because I'm trying to talk about something negative, but like there's really nothing navigated to say. It is middle grade, so, and also the humor is maybe a bit childish, so that can be a negative for some, but it really works for me because I enjoy it so much. So it's not a negative for me, but uh, I would say a warning for you that might not like this because of the style it is written in. And that is fine, it's not for everyone, but like generally for the audience of like Percy Jackson and stuff, you will enjoy this. Uh, but yeah, a negative, I don't really have any. I love it. It is just a fun story and I cannot deal with the fact that the next one is the last one. I'm trying to like follow a better pattern for my review and I was says likes and I'm like I like everything. I love the characters, I love the world, I love especially how this can relate to kids and just how fun I have with this and how much I'm learning as well. Like I love learning about the mythology. So yeah that's my likes. 
overall an amazing series. The next book it's called Arusha and the City of Gold and I cannot wait to see how all the pieces that Sebastian Chalk just put now in these three books will conclude in the last one. It ended on a kind of cliffhanger and I'm so curious to find out what that means so please give it to me now. I am so excited I don't know what more to say. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this review I hope I made sense because I usually don't and you will see me soon in a new video. Bye!